Okay. We are now broadcasting live to everybody. So welcome everybody. I know that we have a very large and excited group tonight. And honestly, do I blame any of you? Nope. Because when I saw this event pop up on our grid, I called dibs. I basically was like, I've been here 20 years. That's worth something. I'm doing <laughs> this event. So uh, welcome everybody. Great, perfect way to spend a Wednesday celebrating one of our favorites with a new release tonight. Thank you, Adam. Um, Thank you. But yeah, you know, we are, we have been waiting maybe impatiently might be the best word for Infinity Reaper, the sequel to Infinity Sun. Um, I can't wait. I haven't had a chance to delve into it. So that's my, I set aside this coming weekend. I mean, it's been that's... out for a whole day, Kathleen. I don't, I don't know well... what you've been doing. Uh... <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I'm setting that bar really high. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that is my weekend read, and I just cannot wait to delve into it. So thank you. But tonight, awesome. you guys, we get a twofer. This is like young adult royalty tonight, as far as I'm concerned. So we've got Becky Albertalli, who's going to be joining us and leading this fabulous conversation tonight. So without further ado, y'all didn't come to hear me blather on. So I am going to kick it over to our two guests of honors, Adam and Becky. Thank you so very much for being here tonight and take thank it away. You. Um, thank you, Kathleen. And thank you, Anderson. Thank you, everyone. It's like piling in right now. I, I held up what it was us because it is the perfect representation of two for one. And, uh, <laughs> um, and we will, of course, be speaking a little bit about what if it's us and teasing a little bit about here's to us which releases later this year but first of all becky hello i'm gonna act like i haven't talked to you earlier today <laughs> oh, and every other day <laughs> how are you <laughs> been a minute no literally like <laughs> right <laughs> yeah i um i have been so excited for this event um partially because i like to hang out with you and this is um this is just like when we hang out under normal circumstances, except for we have to be like slightly more coherent, I think. Right. <laughs> slightly. <laughs> right, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, as Becky knows, and some people know that we just turned in our first draft of Here's to Us uh, yesterday. And um, <laughs> I've had a lot of late nights catching up with Becky. Uh, so I am barely coherent. Uh, which is great timing for a book tour week but um yeah you're gonna find out all kinds of things yeah I need to tell you about your sass oh um, my god like I, can I just like can I just I just have to like say my thing say your thing um, okay all right y'all infinity reaper I'm sure we have the Infinity Sun fandom, if not in here, then yesterday or tomorrow as well. But um, yeah, I am, here's where I am in the book. If you can't tell, that's like, I would say that's oh my God. two thirds or so, um, which um, is like pretty, I would say that's like pretty impressive for like a fantasy book this thick. Um, and the reason, <laughs> that I am already two thirds of the way through it is because it is absolutely unput downable. It is like the pacing, the like point of view cliffhanger, next point of view that like goes right into like the storyline that I was already wondering about. And it is absolutely seamless and it is, um, I, well, I have so much to say about it, but um, thank you. I, <laughs> I, so much I've already. I mean, I'm like, I'm like Adam's gonna have to hear all this again. <laughs> like, so. hey, I worked hard on that book. I can listen to things a couple of times, and it's so Becky. Um, the book is is half dedicated to Becky as well, um, and it's Becky was like a huge source of. Um, everything uh, when I was like going through this book uh, like I had so many highs and lows this book took so much out of me at a time that I didn't have like anything to really give and um, and I got through it and a lot of it was because I was on the phone with Becky a lot I was like constantly sending voice notes like okay so I think I'm gonna do this and I was like plotting things that Becky had and 
like I had no idea what was happening. Like I'd be like in chapter 37, like, so I'm thinking I'm gonna do this instead and move this character and then bump this thing along and accelerate this. And uh, Becky's just like, yeah, that sounds great. Like, uh, uh, and- The queen uh, of world building as y'all know. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> like, no, and it really was like, it, it's so surreal to see both of us like holding this book because it really didn't feel like this book was <laughs> going to happen. Um, like, and the fact that there was only a two month wait from the original publication is still kind of a huge shock to me because it felt like this book was going to need another year um, before it came out and it's out now and I'm really proud of it and I'm so so thrilled that you're blasting through it. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it, you know, it's so interesting to me because like I, um, I mean, Adam and I have talked a lot about how like I am simultaneously obsessed with the infinity cycle covers i actually think they're some of the like most incredible covers in ya um but i also think like i like what's so interesting about like this fantasy series in particular is like it looks like it is really heavy high fantasy from the outside um but i find it to be like um i mean i find it to be so accessible you know, kind of to readers across genres. It's almost like a step more speculative maybe than they both die at the end kind of, but like yeah, existing kind of within that space. Um, yeah, so if there happens to be anybody here who um, has not read Infinity Sun yet, we're gonna be careful as far, like we're gonna right. be careful about spoilers, but um, yeah, like I just want to, um, to make it clear that if um, if you are a person who buys books because they say for fans of Adam Silvera, like, <laughs> the Infinity Cycle like, <laughs> would definitely qualify. Um, so. Thank you. It, 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 it is such an interesting thing, right? Because like. I am obsessed with these covers. The art is by Kevin Tong and it's designed by Aaron Fitzsimmons and Harper Collins. And um, yeah, and I'm like, they're seriously among like my favorite covers, like not just of my books, but of all books. Yeah, I mean, they're really like, I, the design is like incredible. And and yeah, but some people have like been confused that it's a, it's a novel that includes, that takes place in modern day New York and that there are, that social media plays like a big role into it and uh, yeah I mean it's basically just New York if there if people if there were people walking around who had magic um so I, I in fact let me give you guys like a quick sort of like summary on like what that is before we move into like our conversation and, and the themes of it but um the infinity cycle in general is about two brothers Emil and Brighton and explores what happens when one brother gets powers and the other one doesn't so Emil is our basically like chosen one who does not want to be chosen for this, but finds himself with like the powers of a phoenix. And um, he absolutely like wants out of this war and does not want to be a soldier. And then you have Brighton, who is his social media obsessed brother, who is very like hungry for fame as well. And like desperately wishes more than anything that like he has the powers that he had the sort of like chosen one destiny and everything. Um, and uh, and yeah, and you know, there's a lot of like envy that sort of like grows um, between them throughout Infinity Sun and continues to evolve in the series. So um, that is like a basic pitch for it. Um, and there are some other key characters that we will kind of talk about um, because our theme for today is fictional love stories. So we're gonna be talking about um, just love stories in general and how we sort of like operate with them, like what our process was like for what if it's us and our individual books, bringing that stuff into fantasy and like sci-fi like I've done. Um, and yeah. Yeah. I like also, it. oh yeah. Sorry, no, I'm just realized too, I was like, you guys are also cool to ask questions as well. We're gonna like take Q and A um, somewhere like halfway through. And I, I only mention it because I don't see anyone asking any questions yet, which is rare. So I'm gonna make sure that that function is actually working. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, we are definitely game to answer questions in the Q&A box that is like up in the corner. If not, we can also, I guess, check the chat. Um, but yeah, if I don't see questions again in the next like 10 minutes, I'm gonna check in and make sure that the, the function is not broken and we will figure out an alternative. Cool. Yeah, um, okay. So 
I feel like we have been eager to discuss this particular issue for um, for what like this is something that comes up all the time in conversations between us. Um, and that is we have seen people um, people say that like basically a good love story um, has to be a single point of view. Um, and um, and I, I actually really understand kind of where that comes from because, you know, that's, you know, I think like that's sort of drawn from a lot of like classic like romance beats and, um, you know, kind of the will they, won't they. Um, right. You know, which um, I do think um, maintaining that like will they, won't they tension is something that, um, you know, fits very naturally with a single point of view because you don't know like what one person is feeling or thinking. Yeah. Um, and yeah. we were so excited to talk about that because yeah, well, Infinity Reaper has, you know, four points of view. They're not all romantic partners with each other, but you know, like two of them are. And, two of them have a will they won't they yeah yeah and then um you know and of course what if it's us is um you also know. will they won't they <laughs> yeah but um yeah oh my gosh I'm yeah. in the chat one of them better be ness um yeah it's, <laughs> it's definitely yeah, we're... a meal and brighton together <laughs> right no <laughs> yeah. no no there are no. brothers and also brighton would not be a good partner I think. No, god <laughs> no I, <laughs> and you get to kind of see some of that play out but <laughs> yeah I, I do think that is such an interesting point about the uh can you have a successful sort of like novel with the romantic themes if you are getting the perspectives of both people who are sort of like involved in that ship or both or three or however many they are and it's um you know because i like I think of, I think back to like more happy than not, right? Where I won't like spoil um, the book for those who like haven't read it yet, but we only have Aaron Soto's perspective and there's someone he's interested in throughout the book and we don't know how that's gonna play out yet because we also don't, we're not in that person's head. And that, so you really, it, like as Aaron is sort of like, suffocating with a lot of his thoughts like you get the opportunity to kind of like suffocate with him you're not like dude no don't worry like I know this I know this or whatever and it's like you you get to like you stay singularly in Aaron's head right and it makes me think about all those like romantic um uh big moments as they're called in here's to us <laughs> uh where you know someone's going to run to the airport to like wave their person down before they get on the plane or whatever like uh that can be really effective if you just that person just um shows up and we don't see the person like getting in, in their car going to the airport and the other person's at the airport like if we're just the person at the airport and that person shows up that's exciting you know um and it, it it can be a bit of a trick sometimes to figure out how to make it exciting when you do have the perspectives of both people which is something i think that we've done really beautifully with um what if it's us Although, you know, that's funny, though, is because, you know, narratively, like, I think when you see the airport chase in, like, a movie or something, unless I, and, you know, I, I, this could be, like, you know, selectively kind of filtering through, but it seems like we often do see the point of view of the chaser. Right, the chaser, right? yeah. My point um, being, yeah, that it's normally just at least one of them or whatever. And, yeah, and yeah but, like, the, the person... still going to be there. You don't know if they're going to, like, make it in time. But yeah, still, sometimes you you do it's it's interesting um because i i also think that's a difference sometimes between um like you know if you have a um first person point of view novel versus a film where you know just is a step back and you are like yeah kind of that third person point of view that like film kind of naturally seems to take um yeah that is no, that, that's and that's a good point because you really do get these like little cuts of like, okay, the person's in line, they're moving closer and closer mm -hmm. into towards the cockpit, and uh, what's going to happen? And then of course, like they arrive in time where they don't. You know, like I think one of my like favorite moments of this is um, the end of season three of The Office. You know, where uh, if you haven't watched it, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like 
Hey, if you haven't watched The Office and you don't want to get spoiled, my finger being up is me talking about it. I and mean, I will put my finger down when I'm done talking about it. So you can put me on mute starting in two seconds. Uh, so in season three of The Office, when Jim surprises Pam and like we know that like there's an, he's being presented with an opportunity in New York or whatever and Pam is on his mind, but he's also like in a relationship with someone else and then he just appears. Um, and drops this like bomb like on Pam and everything and like and we're all taken aback by it like if we if this had been a novel we would have been in Jim's head like what like him going through the process of it and everything but instead like we got to feel hit by it um when it was just Pam so I'm closing my finger if you need more you need to say we'll do the finger rule again <laughs> but yeah yeah um well all I have to say is just like you know the office is like it is the most romantic thing in the entire world to me. Um, so um, yeah. yeah, I would say both of us uh, love The Office and um, yeah, we continue to love The Office while we were writing here to us. And so, <laughs> you know, but. if you love The Office, you might love <laughs> uh, here's to us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but yeah, no, it, it, it is interesting. And but I really because, um, you know, do we want to talk a little bit about what's sort of happening in here to us in a um yeah as, as an exclusive for those who have shown up um uh yeah do you want to kick off yeah okay um i'm gonna um i'm gonna try not to say too much just because i like i feel like there's a chance our editors in here um oh. we get in trouble so um, yeah i mean yeah. we're not saying anything that's not going to be in the jacket copy that's being uploaded like in a yeah, week yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Um, yeah, so basically, Here's to Us takes place um, two years, like just about two years after What If It's Us, like the main part of the narrative. Um, so uh, Arthur and Ben have both just finished um, their freshman year of college. And um, Arthur is back in New York for the summer. Um, he has not been back to New York since he left it at the, uh, you know, at the end of What If It's Us. And um, Arthur and Ben have not seen each other in person uh, since then. And they have not really been in touch since, yeah, I guess for about three months or so. Right, around Valentine's Day, yeah. 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 And, uh, Ben has been getting to know someone new um, in between these books. Um, and his name is Mario. <laughs> um, and uh, he, Mario's kind of hinted at in the epilogue of What If It's Us, there's a boy in Ben's creative writing class. And uh, that's who that boy turns out to be. <laughs> I'm ready to see a comment, boo, Mario. <laughs> I know, I love to see it too, because it's just like, it is a real problem when you're like reading the draft of this book and Mario is freaking adorable and charming. And yeah. And, um, and it's just like, you love him, but you also like despair if you happen to be rooting for Arthur or like, you know, in Arthur's head actually, because you, invented him and wrote him right um, Mario, Mario is like a tough one to read about sometimes because yeah. he's great he's like yeah he's I will call him Wario oh my god there's so much Mario oh, hate so in this funny. oh my gosh oh, that's it's... also I'm like we oh haven't god. used a Wario joke once. I know that Dylan's gonna you know and especially Dylan's because gonna... there's a moment where Dylan gets yeah. upset at Mario yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you thank you um thank you for um whoever uh, introduced uh, Wario <laughs> first um into the conversation oh my god um, you guys I, have just seen our process in real time it's like basically like we usually it's like we've texted each other something funny um today like y'all gave us the content yeah it's <laughs> and, and you guys we want a 20 percent share fair. Uh, <laughs> I, think that's I mean truly like yeah, um like, it, it's what's so funny too is like for how we've been like oh my god like is Mario like too lovable or whatever? Like, oh, <laughs> nope, everyone hates him before they met him. <laughs> I know, that's um, great. Everybody's rooting for my boy. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's, uh, Mario, Mario Cologne has been canceled before anyone gets to meet him, <laughs> which is like a Mario free zone. You guys are so funny. Um, <laughs> but, but, and okay, I mentioned Mario too, because 
his last name is Scalone, um, Brian. Um, but yeah, uh, I bring up Mario because there were so many times that I was interested in seeing um, his perspective, right? Because we have Ben's and we have Arthur's and it, it does play into that conversation we're having about what does it mean to only have the perspectives of the people sort of like involved in everything? Like I, um, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just, I, I was like curious a couple times, same as I was for other characters in the book, you know? Um, and yeah. Yeah, I no, and so was I. And, and I, you know, one of the things that's also too, like I'm withholding something that I'm just like letting y'all hate Adam's character. Like, <laughs> I know, I was like- I haven't told you, but like- I'm just, I'm just gonna say other characters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there's- <laughs> Uh, there's a boyfriend too. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> Arthur boyfriend. Yeah, Arthur has a boyfriend. So you guys have been here dragging Mario. <laughs> Becky's been sitting on a bo on a boyfriend. <laughs> Not been sitting on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And oh my and he's god. also incredible. <laughs> guys, like here's the thing, and I'm I'm happy that we get to prep you guys um, beforehand because. Time has passed between yes. what if it's us and um, you know, and Arthur and Ben both needed this, is all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, but one of the things that's like that we really had fun playing around with, and again, is that um it goes right back to that perspective thing, which like, you know, we um have these two boys like these you know <laughs> these college kids or whatever who have like drastically different interpretation the boy gets <laughs> both died. I know I was like I needed to say I was like someone just said Mario's about to get a death cast call and then <laughs> the <laughs> boyfriend's all about they left them <laughs> you guys are brutal this I'm I'm drinking water I'm drinking water this is uh, I know it looks like a flask but it's water best audience ever I just like y'all need to like get in here with us <laughs> yeah seriously this is like the so funniest funny. comment section I'm I, disappointed oh I mean God. Chad if you want to believe it's like <laughs> like tequila go for like, it <laughs> I am not citing out of this chat until I screenshot the whole comment section because I'm scared I'm missing like golden content here <laughs> more, more happy without the boyfriend. <laughs> To be fair, Mario is not Ben's boyfriend, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so again, drag Mr. Arthur Seuss uh, since, uh, since we're not naming the other guy right now. So, well, the point is, is Arthur <laughs> gets very, very different interpretations of like what happened between them, who, yes. who, is, um, who is the one who's like more and less invested in like their friendship, who is the one who is, um, you know, who would more want to get back together and like, they just have very different ideas about what's in the other person's head. And so I think like one of the things that was really fun is like we um, got to lean into that leg. You know, we do know what's going on in both of their heads and um, yeah. it's very different. And it's it's so funny to really like everything you're saying about neither of the boys like having the facts the way that they think they do and uh just sort of like filling in the blanks themselves and it's like speaking to emotions that have not been confirmed by the other person you know and like I mean you'll read chapters where like Arthur is kind of like blaming something on Ben and then you'll read the next chapter and Ben is kind of like blaming that same thing on Arthur and they have really valid perspectives but neither of them have like the full piece of the all the pieces of the puzzle um but they're beautiful. A quick thing about this um, that I don't want to forget uh, is that if you have pre-ordered Infinity Reaper or if you buy it by end of day Saturday and you pre-order Becky's upcoming book, Kate and Waiting, um, as long as it's a physical edition, it doesn't matter what country um, you're buying it from, we will send you this Arthur and Ben postcard by Peaches. At Peaches uh, dot, I think dot, obviously. Um, yeah, at Peaches. Yeah, obviously, the Canadian, art is incredible. She's Canadian, like, or at least yeah. in Canada, at least. But yeah, believe so. Yeah. Oh, and then if you is the form still in your Instagram bio? I think so. Yes. 
Yes. Um, so to submit proof of all that, just uh, go to the um, Google form link in Becky's Instagram bio and um, yeah, and then we will be mailing these out to you guys. So just uh, if you buy Reaper by Saturday and pre-order Kate and Waiting, both physical editions, boom. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Basically, uh, you can consider like this is Here's to Us's dad and Kate and Waiting is Here's to Us's mom. And yeah, love it. Yeah. Or one is the <laughs> angel on the shoulder and the other is the on the shoulder. Uh, and... like, oh my God, <laughs> and you've got like this... Like, right we're like i think we know who the devil is the light pink one the like yeah anna thank you for um, submitting the link you're the best um anna put the google form link in the chat oh, uh, thank you so much thank you. Yeah. Um, um but yeah i mean something else that we wanted to kind of like discuss as well um with like romance especially um you know there's a trope in infinity reaper that i'm really excited about and also nervous to bring it up given the way that this chat has gone so far um, with the Mario hate. Uh, but um, it was really important for me to write a- uh, Oh, everybody in the chat has already guessed. <laughs> yeah, a, a yeah. queer love triangle um, between yeah. three queer boys. And uh, and yeah, I was like, you know what? And I know that some people have feelings about love triangles personally, like when done well, like I love them, um, but I really wanted to explore that from a queer perspective because I didn't read any of them growing up. Uh, so I'd say they didn't exist, but I never came across them. And uh, and yeah, and I just, you know, it's between Emil, our chosen one, and Ness, our shapeshifter who doesn't need to shapeshift to be cute. <laughs> and, uh, and there's a new boy, um, his name is Wyatt. And he's one of my favorite new characters in the book. And he is a Halo Knight, which means he is a, he doesn't have powers of his own, but he um, kind of like tends to phoenixes. And uh, and he's like a protector of phoenixes. That's, that's who the Halo Knights are. Um, so yeah, there's this really interesting dynamic between them that I really love. And both boys promise something um, equally sort of like appealing to Emil. And I think that's sort of like a important construct of, of um, love triangles. And I wanted to say too, like one of the things um, that's so great about this book is that, and I say this as a big Ness fan. I, I am like very much a Ness fan. I'm very team Ness, but Oh my God, I love Wyatt. He's like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, will I still be Team Ness by the end of the book? I don't know. But like, Wyatt is freaking adorable. Like, right yeah. now, it's still Team Ness. But I yeah. mean, Wyatt is a flirt. He is. Yeah. Like, he is and here's the thing I love <laughs> Wyatt as well. And as a, as a fan of the series that I'm writing, I am a Ness fan. Um, for sure. I have also like absolutely fallen for Wyatt, which is necessary for me as like the person in Emil's head. Um, but I'm like, I'm rooting for Ness. Like that's who has been, I've been thinking about them for years, but also like, I can't deny, like I am, I always strive for authenticity in my work. And if the right decision is for Emil to be with someone else, whether it's Wyatt or someone else, then like, that is the right decision. You know, like Emil and Ness, like for as much as we love them and everything they also haven't had a ton of time together in infinity sun like they got to bond uh a bit you know like for a while and obviously trust is there which is the most important thing to me in any relationship like i have to have trust like if i like i did an interview earlier and i was like yeah like if trust is like shattered like in some really significant ways then like that is really difficult for me so emil and ness have that you know but we also don't know like how they vibe like as a couple like they've never been together they we don't they don't kiss an infinity sun right like they've never had that experience um and they've never gotten to really like declare emotions to each other so now it's like i i needed to play this out organically because i you know i i've kind of always built them as like a slow burn thing because emil is also in the middle of a war <laughs> right now where he is being seen as a savior and he doesn't want to be in this position you know but he doesn't also get to be like oh man, I'm scared for my life, but also who's the cute guy? You know, like it's, it's harder for him. Um, did Wyatt get his name from Charmed? He did. 
Actually, he absolutely did. Yeah. <laughs> My God, that was so perfect. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to use the name Wyatt for years. I was going to use it for Mateo and they both died at the end and didn't work out. Um, and then I finally realized I'm like, and I, I wanted to save it for the right moment. And then Wyatt surfaced. Uh, fantastic question. Thank you. And fantastic guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, um, well, one of the things that's like, th that I really love about it too, is that you, um, first of all, because you get both Emil and Nessa's points of view that like, even though they haven't actually spent that much time together, they are like very much like on each other's, like they are like living rent free in each other's heads. Right. <laughs> like, but, um, yeah. Yeah. Like, so they're, it, it's just like, it feels like, like Ness is very present for Emil the whole time. And it's just like, and then Wyatt enters the picture and it like absolutely kind of puts, it, it, you know, just almost like turns the, um, the heat higher, I guess, on like those questions uh, that he has about Ness and the thoughts that he's already been kind of working through. Yeah, it's funny, as you were saying it right now too, it makes me think about how the expression like actions speak louder than words. And why it is in a, because Emil and Ness are separated as we know from Infinity Sun, the, the, the ending there, um, Wyatt is in a position to actually use his words <laughs> in a way that like Ness isn't. Um, but Ness's actions for Emil have like left such a lasting impression on him. Like there are many sacrifices and uh, that like Ness made for Emil even in book one. And one of those sacrifices is what led to him being in his current predicament at the start of this book. You know, he he had an opportunity to go do something else and go speak for himself and go live his own life. And he chose Emil and uh and like that's huge you know and Emil carries that with him throughout the entire book even while he gets to bond with Wyatt you know but um he also doesn't know what's good with Ness so it's it's I don't want to say too much beyond that but like uh as in you're fine Becky like you haven't been spoiling anything I'm the one that's like about to be like but then this happens and uh um and this happens and but I I really love Wyatt and I really love Ness and I really love Emil and I want the best for all of them like I I'm excited to do like team Wyatt and team Ness buttons for book three <laughs> but um you know but I I don't hate either of them and I I think Emil would be lucky to be with either of them I actually have a solution I think love it because Ness is a shapeshifter do like a 50 50 kind of <laughs> so, um and this is why i collaborate with becky <laughs> like, uh, this is we're gonna um, you're gonna come with me and write book three now and like and that it's just gonna become like shapeshifter plus happy as ending <laughs> yeah so. um also uh, we should probably turn to yes. some questions in a bit yeah. um um Oh we gosh. can i'm just like wow there's a lot um oh okay i love this question from maya maxwell wesley ruth and esther have a happy ending right so for those who don't know wesley is one of the spell walkers who are the heroes of our group um and he has the power of like swift speed so he can run really fast and he's uh he's adorable i really love him um and i've had the great opportunity to like develop him some more in infinity reaper and we learn in book one that he's a young dad and he has like a partner um, named Ruth and but we don't get to meet Ruth or the baby Esther until book two and uh Ruth is awesome for Becky will speak to it as well but Ruth has the power to um clone herself and I love it so much and uh and Ruth in some ways well uh Becky you're a Ruth fan um what are you what are your thoughts? So Ruth is my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> She's the best. Um, I love, I not only love her, but I love every clone of her. She is a woman <laughs> who like upon getting a cheesy Valentine's Day card, I'm not gonna explain how, but I'm just gonna say she deployed her clones 
like in order to respond to it in the most like absolutely like like chef <laughs> perfect way um she is she has like designed a whole line of like size inclusive clothing like she's fat uh she is like a you know like a fat person in a relationship with another fat person and they are just like wonderful parents to their little cute baby and it was just, like they are just like they are definitely the the um well emil emil's pretty soft too but like they're like definitely yeah soft sweethearts of the group i would say yeah they're, they're not oh, like as head. anxiety struck as anxiety stricken as like emil so like they get to be fluffier and uh, and and have those like gentle moments and uh, yeah, I, I love them so much. And also like they're, I, I'll say this, they're, they're safe. Like they're, I, I'm, I've, I've gotten Wesley, his ass has gotten kicked a lot, <laughs> but like they're safe and they're safe from my powers <laughs> um, is what we should say. Um, all right, next question. Um, what is it like working together on a book after writing separately? I feel like that's a fun one to answer. And I see another one that could be uh, yeah. it's the next one for us. Um, so we both had the experience of writing What If It's Us and then having to write without each other. <laughs> um, <Dad>. Yeah. <laughs> Just, uh, recommended <laughs> so yeah but you know what it's like you know you can do what I did which is you can jump into another collab and that was great like so yeah. I actually wrote another collab with Aisha Saeed um and I can confirm that when um circumstances are normal and in normal times yeah, and with the right person, like yeah, be absolutely magical and a bazillion times better than writing alone. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I had to write. I was rewriting Infinity Sun, but then I had to write Reaper, and I got to do those books back to back. And and I love these characters, but also like I needed a break. Um, and then I still wasn't ready for like here's us because again, even that wasn't the traditional writing of book with someone experience like we didn't have the same experience with like what if it's us where Becky wrote a chapter I wrote a chapter Becky wrote a chapter I wrote a chapter it was Becky wrote a chapter Becky wrote a chapter Becky wrote a chapter Becky wrote because I was writing Infinity Reaper um and rewriting Infinity Reaper and it really like threw us off in a lot of ways and then when it was time for me to like catch up too like I was very behind from where Becky was but Becky I at least got to work off of like Becky's chapters Becky literally had to write with like dead space for where the Ben chapter is supposed to be and now like our point of the next revision is to like make it all gel together um mm -hmm. like we've got all the bones now but now it's time to like lay them out like uh to create like a human being um and uh and, and yeah you know, like, but one of the things that like we're really excited to talk about and we'll be able to speak about it more I think like when we yeah on tour for that book because like we don't you know that process is still being written really but like yeah um, you know, one of the revelations that we had recently um, is because of the way we are doing this. And I had to start earlier because I have the half my right, you know, I, I, I have two kids, two little kids who are school virtually this year. Um, so I, my writing time was like drastically cut. And um, so I just had to like write as soon as I could start writing and, you know, just every day, like constantly and every you know and um it's it's interesting because like you know there was um it was a loss like we were both really sad about kind of missing some of the like joy of kind of the back and forth of, of what if it's us um but through the story like and i'll let you maybe yeah Kind of talk speak to this a little bit um to the extent that, that you want to but um for the story you know it had the interesting effect of like kind of creating space for some like really like authentic like feelings of uncertainty like definitely for arthur you know 
yeah, is kind of having his whole like emotional journey without knowing what's in Ben's head. Yeah, and really, and just not knowing that it, um, you know, because even as I like progressed the book, like I stopped reading Arthur chapters until it was time for me to like naturally read them, and uh, because I didn't want to like anticipate like his feelings either, and like and figuring out like how to counsel them, like I just wanted to like stay true to Ben. So. Um, so a great question uh, from Trevin um, uh, on love stories. Would you ever consider revisiting old characters and give them love stories later in life? We need more books about 20 and 30 somethings finding love. Um, and Trevin personally wants Aaron to find the right man and have a happily ever after, even if it's not until he's 30. <laughs> um, like that's bold of you to assume Adam's characters are still alive. <laughs> like that. Uh, oh my god <laughs> like who when like, this is really like this is my legacy oh my god um, um yeah i uh i'm never killing aaron um i will let death kill aaron um but and, and later in life but i um i don't know i get asked a lot about histories like a lefty sequel um and i'm just like no like i i like do i think griffin ends up with the person who it seems like he's going to end up with like late ultimately in life I'm like I do not think that like uh I think that like if I did write a book about Griffin in his like 20s he is still messed up in a lot of ways because um he's went through some really traumatic things um and I think the same could be said for Aaron um and it's like and I want happiness for all these characters I just don't I'm careful with like projecting that it's like that easy sometimes, you know, um, with like, oh, well, yes, the love of my life died, but now I'm dating someone else. So I'm in the clear <laughs> and I'm just like, no, like that's that's really hard. And like, we've even with Here's to Us, we've seen how Arthur and Ben are comparing their current situations with their relationship with each other, with Ben's like first boyfriend and all that stuff. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't have any plans to do this, but um, yeah. Y'all are killing me in the chat. Like, can I yeah. just read some of these out there? Like, these are plans. Adam is talking about death, and I'm it, like, it, like, um, they both die at the end, but Mario is actually called they both. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's everyone except Mario? <laughs> Here's oh to everyone God. except Mario. Mario framed Maribel's parents. <laughs> <laughs> Rename here's to us. Mario dies at the end. I dare you. I blame <laughs> Mario for the blackout. <laughs> this is sweet. Yo. Um, I yeah. More happy <laughs> oh, than Mario. <laughs> <laughs> This is, Yo, the best, we, this is the the best audience y'all are so seriously I like cannot get enough guys come to all the events <laughs> mario is worse than luna I, I swear also quick spoiler but becky and i will be in conversation again um when her new book comes out katie and waiting so keep an eye out for for that and um leave your mario hate at home okay uh, you know that we'll use that like well yeah the kate launch will be where like we we can give y'all enough to go on so we can um fling some hate at, yeah at the other boy yeah um someone wants to know you decide if we should answer this uh who wrote the last chapter of fierce to us yeah, we should can we answer? answer? What do you think? Should we? Yeah, we can answer that. I mean, it'll be obvious as soon as a chapter sample is released. I think, right? Right. Um, I wrote it. So that's it. Okay. <laughs> Good night. Um, <laughs> so. All right. Um, Katie. Hey, Katie. Um, Katie wants to know when I realized there would need to be a book three for the Infinity Cycle. Miss you too, Katie. Um, I I always planned it as a trilogy. And I mean, it was a trilogy from the start. It was sold as a duology, um, but my editor, um, original editor for the series knew that I had a vision for a trilogy and we just needed to see if like sales and stuff sort of like justified that. And also making sure that I had enough story, like, cause I sent kind of like a, 
a kind of like a short outline, um, which is like typical when you are uh, proposing like a series like to a publisher, they want to know like, what, what's going to happen in book two and what's going to happen in book three. And of the paragraphs I gave them for book two and three, they kind of felt like that it could have been consolidated into one book. And I was like, maybe we'll see. Um, but then as you write book two, um, like there's no way. I mean, th this book is <laughs> look how much, look how much it grew. <laughs> like, and it's not done. Like there's a lot of, there's still so many things in book three that are to come in book three that like I've been excited to write for years. So um, it was always gonna be a trilogy pretty much unless book one just really didn't sell. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. And Becky, if you see a question that you're particularly excited to answer like go for it as well. Um, uh, oh, I see. Oh, can I ask you? Oh, yeah, please. Please, oh. I, I know which one, I'll flag mine. Um, what's your favorite, uh, this, so this is from Anna, what's your favorite Easter egg uh, that you have written into your books um, or that others have written into theirs, uh, like in Concrete Rose for the Simon Verse? Um, oh, cute. Um, well, Becky wrote a really fun, they both die Easter egg into Here's to Us, um, <laughs> which is cool because I wrote like a Love Simon Easter egg into What If It's Us. <laughs> um, so. So I, I love that those are in conversation with each other. And I also obviously really love um, the Alan character in um, Strange Fascinations of Noah Hypnotic by David Arnold. <laughs> um, like I, and I love that David is Dylan and um, What If It's Us. Like, I, I guess like, yeah, I mean, I would say those are, those are all my, my, my faves that are coming to mind right now. How about you? You wrote each other as like the most extreme versions of yours. Yes. <laughs> like, you, yeah, it is hilarious seeing the way you and David see each other and yourselves. It's like, oh like a Dylan supremacist <laughs> in the <laughs> comments. Oh, we have a Dylan supremacist. <laughs> it's like, um, we should all be that. I, um, I like, I mean, I have so many favorites, but I, one thing um, that I think it's like closer to the beginning of this, but like that, like I was so happy to see was um, Dr. Oshiro. Um, oh, yeah. Like, um, yeah, yeah, which is a nod to the author, Mark Oshiro. Yeah, so like, yeah. So Mark Oshiro is a doctor in the infinite yeah. cycle. And there's also the... Clayton Center of Recovery, which is after Danielle Clayton. Um, and I, oh, I, see, I was wondering if that's a real place. I actually used to work at a place called Clayton Center. And oh my God. Like, oh, that's weird. No. They have one of those in New York too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally was just like, yeah. um, oh my God, someone said Taz and I'm just like, where's my dog? <laughs> um, I, I have these moments where I can't remember if he's at daycare or home. Um, he's at daycare, uh, but you'll have to come to the other events this week to see him jump on me and scratch me but uh, yeah no that's made up after Daniel Clayton and, and I'm pretty sure there's a there's a Caldwell somewhere in Infinity Reaper which is a not to Patrice Caldwell like so I'm in a group chat with like I'm in several group chats but this one was specifically for Danielle Clayton Marco Shiro and Patrice Caldwell <laughs> um so so yeah that was that was fun that's me um <laughs> all right there was a question from Ava Grace yeah um uh, is there one character out of both of your books that you relate to a lot or means a lot to you? And then also unrelated, um, uh, Ava's thanking me for liking the frame pages from Infinity Sun that they posted on Twitter. Um, and uh, like Becky, so you know, because uh, Becky's not on Twitter because Becky's smart. Um, it's uh, um, uh, Ava posted uh, these pictures of um, like a frame chapter um, from Emile's perspective and a frame chapter from Brighton's perspective from Infinity Sun, uh, from, yeah, both from Infinity Sun and uh, with like a stack of like all my books, including What If It's Us and, um, and I just loved it so much and made me emotional. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, so do you have like a particular character that you're like, that's, that's my vibe? <laughs> I mean. It's like all of them. I am like, yeah. like, when am I not? I, yeah, they're, each one's sort of like a different, side of me I mean I'm mostly Dylan though obviously yeah <laughs> I, oh my god the the yeah. Dylan stuff that Becky has written into here's us is hysterical like I cannot wait for um everyone to experience that like it's it's so extra <laughs> um like god we oh, just need like a, we need like a Dylan book <laughs> I think like it's yeah I feel like if we ever had to write a book together that was from the same 
character, like not each getting our own. I think we could both write a Dylan book um, and just like. Okay, that's a, I'm, I'm digging that idea. Yeah, that's Dylan Novella um, requesting the comments. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, okay, we have time for like a couple more because I need to do a contest with you guys. Um, so uh, let's see if there's like some lightning round ones um, that we can do. Uh, when is the cover reveal release date? Uh, Here's to Us comes out on December 28th of this year. So the last Tuesday of the year and the cover reveal is happening later in March. It is gorgeous. The cover is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, and like no edits on it. It's like unprecedented. Like they just. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Um, Here's to Us is further away than originally planned. Originally planned for October, but that's because um, I went through a major mental health crisis in December and we fell behind. Um, and I would normally apologize for that, but I'm, I'm getting better about not apologizing for my mental health <laughs> um, and just accepting that like I had to prioritize myself and that's where I'm at. <laughs> so um, thank you guys well, for the support also, in the comments. To be, to be clear, like I would not have been able to like just with the childcare stuff, like I would not have been yeah. able to we struggle. I mean, writing a book in a pandemic was not fun. Yeah. Um, Tezika's great. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, okay, I'm gonna do like, if you both could write another book together besides the What If Plus series, what ideas come to mind? We had an idea for yeah. something, but I don't think it's like flesh enough for us to like even, and also let's not put it out into the universe and like keep you guys like, I, I, don't, I don't need you guys coming to my future launch parties, like treating that my published book like Mario uh, when you really want the, the co-write. Uh, so I've taken enough views tonight. So um, I'm gonna do like one more. Um, uh, sorry guys, and if it seems like I'm skipping over your questions because I want to find something that's like fast. Um, while he's looking, uh, I just want to point out that, like, I can't guarantee that the more copies of Reaper you order, the more likely Mario is to die. Uh, <laughs> but I will just say that, like, you know, Adam has been known and we are not done with edits. Um, oh, my God. So. I buy all the copies. <laughs> <laughs> Move aside, Cassandra Claire. We're coming for you. <laughs> Uh, I love this. Um, I, I, I saw this is a quick question. Uh, someone asked uh, why uh, why the same didn't work for Mateo. Um, just because I wanted something that um, just had more of a Hispanic vibe for him. Like I wanted Mateo to be very coded from the um, offset. And, and I also have always really loved the name Mateo as well. And it just felt right. And I wrote an entire book with his name being Wyatt and it didn't stick. Um, and once I like had Mateo, which by the way, I got that name from some guy in high school who I didn't like, but I loved, and that, Mateo wasn't his name, but that was his nickname. And I'm just like, you don't deserve that name. Um, and Mateo Torres does though. So, okay, <laughs> guys, this is how the contest is gonna go. So every, um, every tour stop this week, uh, this is not a real pen. Um, I've been doing a, a contest where you get to win a virtual meet and greet with me. There's two opportunities for that, as well as um, two books from my uh, book event partners or whatever. So Becky, um, I'm going to be offering up two copies of her next book, Kate and Waiting, and they will be pre-ordered through Anderson's Bookstore um, as a thank you for them hosting us tonight. And uh, um, yeah, so I'm going to ask you guys, I'm seeing people already put down numbers, so to be to do a plot twist, I'm going to ask you guys to put down numbers between 50 and 70. And the first two people I see, also, I'm writing down numbers. I'm not looking. Um, oh my gosh. OK, I've written down two numbers. Um, I'm now going to look through the chats. And the first person I see who had used those numbers or whatever, they will be getting uh the the prices so i my god i'm scrolling i'm scrolling okay <sighs> do, 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 do. all right um i'm looking through as if i know what the numbers are <laughs> <laughs> um all right i need to, like i lost track okay oh my god some of you are so close you're gonna be annoyed um oh my god Oh, okay. All right. Um, Sean, uh, you hit the 56. Here's proof that I wrote that. Um, and I'm blocking the other number. 
Um, so Sean, I'll give you instructions on what to do at the end here. Um, and then what's the other number, Adam? Okay, great. Oh my God, some of you are so close. Um, oh my God. I'm like cringing for some of you, like this sucks. Um, uh, okay, okay. It's always, oh, there we go, Chad. Chad Harper, 61. <laughs> um, so awesome, yay. All right, so this is how it's gonna work. Um, please, um, email assistant singular um assistant at adamsilvera.com and my assistant caitlin is going to organize um everything with you guys we're going to get your addresses so i can pre-order caitlin waiting for you guys through anderson's bookshop and uh and then we'll schedule the 10 minute meeting greets um so yay i think that's it oh my gosh how can we download and save the entire chat yeah i'm like i'm like so scared to end this event because i don't want to lose the chat it's like the chat is my next book. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for this. I don't know about any of anybody else that was here tonight, but this was exactly really what I've needed in my life since pandemic started. So thank you guys so much for the great books and stories that you've given us, but the laughter that we've all shared tonight because I don't think there's anything better than a bunch of book lovers getting together and just schmoozing over a bunch of books that we love. So Becky and Adam, thank you so much. Thank you guys for all of you for coming tonight because without any of you, none of us would be here. So thank you all so much for- And don't everything. forget to uh, submit your proof of purchase for the What Ups Us art. Yeah. And congratulations um. to Sean and Chad. Well done. I, I know it was luck, but hey, still well done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kathleen Anderson, thank you so much. I uh, really appreciated this. And um, guys, check out my website for the rest of the tour events if you want more opportunities to um, win books and uh, meet and greets and just like more fun conversations. So. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, so all of you now know what you're going to do, right? For the rest of the evening, go grab your book, sit down and read. We don't Yay. want to see any of you on social media until you're done with the book. And then we can all talk about it. Unless so. you're campaigning to get people to buy more Infinity Reaper so we can kill a Mario. Oh. There's well, an opportunity. There's, that. there's an there opportunity. There is that too. So, all right. <laughs> thank you all so much. All right. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Bye.